Good morning. Sorry, a few minutes late this morning. Still trying to work out that blessed camera on that laptop, but um, still not succeeding. I'll get there in the end. I've got there with so many things this last uh, few weeks, so I feel quite sure that I will be there. So apologies, it's a little after 11 o'clock. It's the Sunday, the 3rd of May, and here we are once more. Good to see you all. Thank you for joining me, pressing your button and joining me today, this morning. Um, it's not a very nice morning so far, uh, but um, who knows? The afternoons are um, looking pretty sunny at the moment, aren't they? So, uh, good morning, as I've said, and welcome to St Paul's Facebook page. You can also catch up with these talks, these little reflections of mine on St Paul's Carlton.org uh, website and they're all there. Uh, so please uh, do point people, people who aren't on social media, please do point them to um, that, that website. And also you'll remember on Wednesday that I gave you that 0800 number so if you play that particular uh, video you'll find that free number uh, to listen to uh, reflections and prayers and hymns too so there's lots and lots of things going on on Facebook um, we're still struggling to uh, be in touch uh, we're doing phone calls for people who are on landlines and if you think that we have missed anyone as a church, then please do message me, call me, and uh, I can assure you that we haven't, or get my finger out if um, we have. So um, hopefully everybody has been included in our correspondence. So uh, it's great to be with you again. And uh, what kind of week have you had? I think really it's been much the same for me, to be honest. Did anybody see the cheerleader yesterday in Tesco Car Park? I was there uh, early evening and uh, I don't know whether he'd been there early on. He did promise, didn't he? So maybe you'll be able to tell me if he was there or not because he did promise to return. So it was good when I went into Tesco's. I didn't queue for very long, which is always good. And uh, I got a couple of bits and I just for interest sake went round to the flower and see if there was any flower. I don't need any, so I didn't buy any. And I was delighted to see that there was a few bags of flower left on the shelf of plain and self-raising. That's been a bit bad to get, the self-raising. Uh, but uh, and wonder of wonders, there was some dried yeast as well so how blessed are we what a bonus how blessed are we good morning everybody it's great that you're here with me so did you clap uh, on Thursday evening did you do your round of applause it's very emotional isn't it and as I go out I can see because obviously you'll know the drive uh, down so I go out the back and I clap there and then I come up, go up to the bedroom and I'm delighted to see that with social distancing people from Orchard Court are coming out too onto that little bit of area there and they're standing apart but they're passing the time of day and it's great it's um it's a good time i particularly want to thank this week i want to thank all those carers who are working in nursing homes they're doing a grand job thank you very much and all those volunteers all those people that are involved in food banks uh, we have a food bank here as you know that runs out of the methodist church uh, that's a joint effort and what an effort it is too are very blessed to have some very wonderful volunteers and with social distancing we're managing to feed an awful lot of people so that's on Tuesday that um, that starts 12 and goes on to quarter to three and at this moment in time you can all also get food 
on a Friday as well, if for any reason you've missed Tuesday. Same time, 12 till 3. Down in Netherfield, I know St George's are doing an amazing job. If you know anyone who is in dire straits, you can get a free hot meal from St George's Netherfield. In extreme circumstances, they will come into Colton. They have already, uh, uh, following up one of my requests. And also, what else? They, uh, they have a food bank down there. Avril runs the food bank down there. And that's on Wednesday, 1.30 to 3. So please do, if you know anyone for yourselves or for anyone else, please pass all these wonderful messages on. You know what I say? We're better together, aren't we? So nursing homes and food banks, all those people that work there, thank you very much. The other news uh, this week, well, surely uh, I have to give the Prime Minister a mention, no matter what you may think of him. Uh, and his girlfriend, Carrie, welcomed their new baby boy, Wilfred. And we're looking forward to this coming week, aren't we? Well, I certainly am, to see where abouts we are in lockdown. Because it's really tough, isn't it? Everybody I speak to says how tough it is for not to be with all of our loved ones and all of those that are dear to us and all of those that we do things for and, um, you know, just in general so it's a tough call but and it's excruciating i've put that word in as well um it's really hard but we soldier on even though i'm missing all of my family and there are lots of them as you know i'm missing my church family as well and there's lots of those and a member of our congregation is actually 90 tomorrow uh, i think that a lot of you around colton may know this lady she's christine johnson and she's uh, having this very special birthday tomorrow so she used to be in her younger days the teacher at the old st paul school and she has some truly amazing stories to tell and if you're a regular in tesco's uh, i know that you will have seen her up and down those aisles so you may have even even heard a few of those stories so we want to say here on social media happy birthday christine good on you many blessings to you and many more birthdays so i think of all those people uh, that would come to the building of st paul's to join in our sunday worship and now it also makes me think about all those very many people how blessed are we as a church that join in here and view these little reflections as well so as i think on all those people that come into the building not just for sunday morning worship but all those other various activities that run out of st paul's and i know a lot of you will know a lot about them i want to assure you i miss each and every one of you so today we would have been thinking about Jesus being the Good Shepherd and this fourth Sunday after Easter is actually called Good Shepherd Sunday. We learn that Jesus told his disciples, his mates, truly he says to them, truly, he says this a lot, does Jesus, truly I say to you. I am the good shepherd and those who know me know my voice. We all know that a good shepherd looks after his sheep and in the first part of the Bible which we know as the Old Testament God the Father is often pictured as the good shepherd there are lots of places that the Bible speaks about the Good Shepherd. And it brought to my mind that wonderful psalm that we all know and love. Again, like the Lord's Prayer, it may have been something that we have recited when we were younger or even now. 
Psalm 23, a refreshed memory. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil and my cup overflows. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I would dwell in the house of the Lord forever. So, in this psalm, we can see God wants to be our provider and our protector. When we get to the other half of the Bible, called the New Testament, we can now see Jesus taking on that earthly role of the shepherd. And the shepherd's main task, as I know you know, is to find good things for his sheep to eat, clean water for them to drink, to keep the, sea, the sheep safe from harm and to watch over them. This shepherd, Jesus, is even prepared to leave 99 sheep and go after one that is lost. I bet you can remember that story, can't you? So we know, don't we, that when we see lambs in the field with their mums and their dads, and particularly they, if they wander away a little bit, there's a special bleat, isn't they, I'm told. Um, I'll be happy to have your comments. And um, I'm told that the, the sheep, particular sheep, have a particular bleat for uh, their mothers. So if they wander off a bit, they go, meh, meh, meh. It's not a very good impression, I know, but like that kind of thing. And the mother pricks the ears up and knows actually that, ah, that's my baby. That's my child I need to go and find. Bah, bah. And they recognise each other by the, the sound that they make. And so they are joined together again. They find each other again. And sometimes I think we can be a bit like those lambs, can't we? We can make noises a special bleat, if you like. And then that special bleat pricks up the ears of Jesus and he comes to find us. He helps us to find a way back to the fold, to the pen. And in, in Jesus' time, the shepherd would have actually laid down in the Old Testament the, where the, the field was and you've got that wall, that stone wall, the shepherd would have laid uh, by the, the gap, laid in the gap to protect the sheep from the wolves and anything else that was going to come along and steal them or kill them. So I've said that Jesus is the good shepherd and all of his sheep, that's us, you and me, we know his voice. I think sometimes, I always speak to myself in these reflections, we think being busy is the sign of a worthwhile life. And as you know, I'm speaking to myself as well. Sheep can be, are, such silly, mutton-headed creatures with a great capacity to rush the wrong way into danger. And it's no wonder we have to bleat to Jesus and say, help, help, 
Come and find me. Come and find me. I know I've said this before, but I think it's worth repeating this morning, being Good Shepherd morning. We seem to get our kicks from being a human doing. I think we need to practice more being a human being. Because that's what God wants for each one of us to be. So until a few short weeks ago, I was the one rushing around, feeling worthwhile, doing much, much more than anybody should be doing in one day. And it seems, especially for me, that actually, because I've gone down, not one, not two, maybe even three gears, because I'm always in that motorway fast lane, which is not strictly true. I have to assure you, I'd, I hate the fast lane of the motorway. But I travel at fairly good speed in the other ones. Not breaking the speed limit, right? That wouldn't be proper. So, I digress again. So, going down into that lower gear. And because we're in that lower gear, because we're coming by those still waters if you like, we're, a being allow we're allowing ourselves to be by those still waters so that God can restore our souls, take us to those green pastures, not necessarily into our gardens, not physically, I'm thinking here in our minds, taking us to that solitary place where we can once again hear the voice of the Good Shepherd. In Psalm 23, the Great Shepherd will gently lead us back when we've veered off the path. You know that crook that the shepherds hold here? And when the little sheep go astray, the little lambs go astray, they hook them in, don't they? That's what Jesus does for each one of us. Hallelujah. He hooks us in. He says, come on, what are you doing over there? Get over here. This is where you should be. On this path. This path. Because truly, I tell you, he says, I am the good shepherd. So he leads us back to those right paths, those paths that we should be on. Listening to his voice, not all those other folk that might well think they have our best interests at heart. Sometimes that's not strictly true, is it? So we listen to truly, I tell you, I am the good shepherd. I don't know about you, but at times like this, I can feel totally overwhelmed and out of my depth. And it's then that I cling to that good shepherd for all I am worth. That's for each one of us. So at times like these, we can feel totally overwhelmed and out of our depth. That's when we cling to the shepherd for all we are worth. We can't understand, can we? We can't fathom it out. And the media doesn't help. One day one thing, one day the next. We don't know what we're supposed to believe. It changes here, it changes there. In a climate where we have good news, bad news, fake news, any news. Isn't it time to cling on to the good news of Jesus? That's a question, by the way, not a statement. That's for me and for you. Are we clinging on? Are we close enough to hear the voice 
of the good shepherd. You see, the thing is, to be close, you've got to be willing to get yourself into that pen, that sheep pen. Jesus talks himself talks about himself being the gatekeeper. But the gate is open for each and every one of us. Our part to play, remember I always talk about two-way relationship. Our part to play is walking through. Now it may not all will be well, but actually whatever happens to us in that sheep pen, we will be assured that Jesus is right there with us. We may have to walk through the valley of the shadow of death. But he is there with us every step of the way. The gate is open. Just walk through. Simple. I'm just going to leave that there. The choice is yours, my friends. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and all those you love and care for but cannot see at this moment in time. The Lord be gracious to you and grant you his peace. We ask for this blessing in the name of God the Father, God the Son and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Stay at home. Stay safe. Stay well. God bless.